how to build the Rocketeer jetpack in real metal. This thing is uh, reasonably accurate to the uh, film. Um, everything on this is metal except for the engines, which are plastic. And I'm going to show you how I built it. Um, you guys have been asking for this thing for quite a while. I know it's not technically armor this time, but grab your hammers, let's get started anyway. This template is free. You can click under the video or in the video or go directly to armortemplates.com to get yours. Here's all the pieces cut out, most of the pieces anyway. And I'm going to start with the boosters, at least I think they're called boosters. Um, just basically rounding these things around a piece of exhaust pipe. And just going slow to make sure I don't get any kinks. And then once it's together, I drill holes and then pop in some rivets. These are a three quarters inch apart. Um, looking back, I, sh I would probably do them a half inch or so. We got to do some trimming right here. Not that big of a deal. Um, I've got a piece of 3 16 rod in here, bent to shape to fit, and I'm going to weld in um, this piece to give it a lot more strength and a lot more um, thickness. And I'm going to get rid of these Gorilla Booger welds with a flap disc. Looking pretty good. There's no way to avoid welding in this project. I usually try to avoid that stuff, but this time I just couldn't, so sorry about that. These are the tops of the boosters, They're the pointier sections. These have to be dished um, or else it's not going to look right, so it's got to be done. There's four pieces total, and um, it wasn't extremely hard but it wasn't really easy either. You can see I got a good curve in both directions now. Ignore the bumps, we're gonna get them out with planishing later on. Looking okay. Here I'm gonna be planishing on a railroad spike that's polished and with a very flat hammer. This does take a lot of time but definitely an important part of the process. Now I've got a little sanding sander, sanding belt thing that I'm uh, getting rid of most of the bumps with and then I'm just getting rid of all the marks with sandpaper. Now I'm marking off and drilling holes for the top of the boosters and these pieces just slide into place um, and I'm going to rivet them temporarily um, uh, to get everything fitted properly. Now I probably took this thing apart 20 or 30 times um, to get all of the fitment uh, stuff done properly. If you don't do that you're just not gonna get these, this perfect, uh, these perfect lines. Kind of convincing it to take shape. And as you can see, um, it's no longer straight, so I have to uh, make a line and make a cut to make sure it lines up with this line here. Then drill some more holes, pop some more temporary rivets, and then we're going to measure carefully and then cut the top um, to the proper length. Now I'm going to drill the rivets out and then disassemble it so that I can cut these pieces and get them perfect. Now I've got some stuff marked off on top here. Um, these little uh, holes need to be drilled out and also these little slits need to be cut because we're going to uh, weld from the back side. I went to the grocery store and got some little tiny metal bananas and we weld the bananas in from the back. We're going to round this part on a piece of exhaust pipe, and eventually it's going to look like this. Weld this piece. Um, really this stuff is pretty thin, it's 20 gauge, so you have to kind of just tack weld it 
and then uh, grind it down. You can't give a, a full bead because you're gonna blow right through the stuff. This little ring is important, so we're gonna weld that onto the bottom too. And that gives us a little space there between the, the cone and the rest of the booster. And we weld it in from the back like the other parts. Now I can assemble um, everything permanently, at least this part of it. And you see here I've got a jig uh, set up on, on the desk or on the bench. Uh, you have to do this or else you're not going to get these parts to mate properly. So measure carefully and then make yourself a jig that attaches to the bench. This is the center section at the bottom that I'm just giving a, a basic curve to. And then I have to um, mark it off and grind it later on so it fits perfectly. Now the center section was really hard to do, I'm not going to lie. Um, this took a lot of time. I think I spent 11 hours on it. Um, and just hammering and planishing and shaping and uh, getting it to fit. Because it's got to look good, it's got to be equal on both sides. And it has to fit to the boosters on both sides. Um, so it's just it's a, a whole lot of work to do. Definitely worth it in the end, but a lot of work. Not looking too bad. Flattening out the top. Alright, that looks pretty good. A little bit of uh, flap wheel flap disc will help us get rid of some of these ugly bumps. Here I'm marking off where the flange um, curves away from this part and using an anvil and hammer just going at it to uh, get this thing shaped right. Looking good. Ooh. Not good. That did not work at all. So I had to cut the flange off and actually uh, put some pieces of metal on here that are curved to fit the boosters rivet them on and then weld the flange to it. There's just no other way to do it. I mean, give me a break. I'm not imaginary Howard Hughes. Now's a good time to mark off where the grates will go, the vents. And cut them out. And the center snout section has to be mated to the center section as well. And this piece uh, will need to be trimmed again to fit that part. To make the little blisters on the sides, I um, came up with, uh, I think this is 3 quarter inch MDF and just a piece of 20 gauge steel. And I screw it in position and then just start hammering on it and it just uh, kind of takes the shape of the blisters. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of crude at first, but keep on going and eventually it looks good. Not too bad. Now we got to do some planishing though because um, it's a little bit too bumpy to just sand out. So looking good, looking good. And again, it has to fit inside of a rounded booster, so you're gonna have to do a little more, more shaping to it. Rivet these one at a time, and it'll kind of cinch itself up into position and be perfect. Now for the grates um, or vents at the bottom. Um, this was kind of a, a complicated process. Um, I'm welding in some some pieces of uh, steel from the underside. Actually, I'm not welding it into the booster. I'm welding those pieces together, as you can see here. And then I can take some round rod. This is 3 16 round rod. And curve it on a piece of exhaust pipe. And then flatten it on both sides so it's not uh, uh, round. You don't want it to be round. You want it to have some kind of flatness to it. Now I'm uh, welding in one of those little sections and then using little magnets I'm spacing it apart and then finishing the grates like this. Um, I wanted to give it like a louvered effect so I used a Dremel tool to kind of flatten the, the, uh, the front side of those. And then once it's finished just weld it in from the back side. The grate for the center is uh, a little bit more simple, but uh, still a lot of work. Just these pieces uh, carefully cut out and then welded in from the rear. And something similar for the lower piece. 
This piece here um, will get welded to something else later. The, I call it the radiator section, which is what you see me building here. Um, this is just little uh, triangles we're putting together um, and just spacing it uh, properly apart. Uh, fitting it to this thing is really hard. This took a lot of time and a lot of work to get it right. You can see I've got little um, pieces uh, welded in from the bottom to kind of lock it in position. And this piece here, this is not included in the template because there's no way that that size is going to be the same on yours. So here I've got the flap started and um, I've got some like trenches cut into it so that it will bend for me in the vise. And then I'm welding in those little, um, I don't even know what you call them, little metal lines. <laughs> These little ears that stick out from the bottom are what um, connect the flaps to the boosters. Just weld the pieces in and then grind it away. Looks pretty good. And then put it on the flap and then uh, weld it uh, in position. Now you see I've got some uh, little supports welded in as well to hold this thing together. Uh, permanently and a little back plate to cover up everything and make it look pretty. A couple of rivets here and there will make it look good. And this little piece will keep these rods uh, connected. This is rub and buff. I stole this idea from Adam Savage. Um, this stuff is awesome. It's really easy to use. Um, by the way, somebody please make sure that Adam sees this video. I think he'll appreciate it. Rub this stuff on and you're done. Looks great. Um, I built the engines out of various plumbing parts and a bowl and some clay and stuff and I made a mold for it and then um, I also made this uh, mother mold to go around it. And I'm going to be doing what's called slush casting. Basically just going to mix this stuff together and dump it into the mold. Then just spin it around, make sure it coats everything. And you're going to do like five, six, maybe even seven layers and it comes out looking like this. Depending on demand, I might, might, might sell uh, rough cast engines on the website, but be forewarned, they won't be cheap. It's a lot of work. This I got from South Beach Leather. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you guys can pick one up too. Really, you can't beat it for the price, and actually I like it so much that next week I'm gonna put up a video where you guys can actually win one. There you have it guys, uh, really this is, I know I say it every time, but this is the coolest thing I've ever built. I mean, and you've seen my car, and, uh, and my car is awesome. This thing is better than my car. Um, definitely going on display. Um, no, I will not sell it to you, and no, I will not build you one unless you offer me stupid amounts of money, so please don't ask. Total weight, if you're wondering, is 30 pounds. Find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash armor templates. Give the page a like. Make sure to connect with other armorers and me on there. Also visit my website, armortemplates.com, where you can check out all of these templates that I've got. And make sure to check out all the videos I've got showing you how to make this cool stuff. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Had a lot of fun building this thing. Let me know what you guys want to see built next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.